Mom was strict. Yeah. Mom mom was tough. I'm not gonna say she was Yeah, she was tough. Mm. She was tough because she worked that night. So she oh, would, so you were showing your ass. Oh yeah, I was showing my you ass. You were showing your ass. And she would bed. try to have my older cousins kind of because my sister was younger, so babysit them. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, she was strict. She wasn't she was about her business. Even with our family, she was kind of the strong one in the family. Mm-hmm. You know, so when I used to see it, or hear her cry in a room or something, mm-hmm. That used to tear me up because it made me start to realize when, when Superwoman needs a shoulder mm-hmm. to cry on, where does Who Superwoman go for? That's right. You that's know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. What, what does that superhero go when they need somebody? And uh, that's why I refused. I was like, man, I got to make it. I got to right. do what I got to do because I, I can't be having this, man. Tell me about high school. High school. Were you a good student? I was an excellent student. Oh, man. impressive. Yeah, what high school you went to? Newark Tech. North Tech, man. Is Essex. that a good school? Yeah, it's a, it's a te- it was a technical event. At that time, North Tech, Essex County Vocational and Technical School, they had a advanced program, which was called AVT for Advanced Vocational and Technical. So it was kind of like uh, the academics mixed with the tech tech side. And, um, you know, it was the first in computers back then. So I was on everything, man. Um, you know, I was still cool in the streets, but yeah. I was still getting my work done because I had I had to. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember one time um, a friend of mine, Kenya Reed, Kenya Reed gave me the name Do It All because I was on the baseball team. I was on the basketball team. I was about team. to ask you, were you in sports? Yeah, I was great in baseball, too. Yeah. So Why didn't you pursue that? I did. Really? Um, I just got caught joyriding at the wrong time. Lost all my scholarships. And a councilman by the name of Ralph T. Grant Sr. came to my aid, knew I wasn't a bad guy. Uh-huh. I mean, they did me crazy, too. Like, the prince, they had the police, county police come to the school and surround oh, yeah. me at the front of the school, make uh-huh. this big thing, try to embarrass me. You know, because I was, I was about to be a New York Yankee on them. Right, right. You know what I mean? Or New York Met, one of them. And, um, and then you said, I'm going to grow up, I'm going to be a councilman. Yeah, right. I didn't <laughs> even say that, though. But, but the councilman at the time... He, he stepped in. He knew I wasn't a bad guy. Mm-hmm. He wrote letters. He got me into his alma mater, which was Shaw University. And he became one of my mentors. I wait, wait, Shaw University. Oh, wait, hold, hold, hold. oh yeah, we wait, went to school on him. Hold on, hold on. Uh huh. Is that an HB? HBCU, baby. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Shout out to all my Alpha Phi Alpha brothers, too. Let man. me f- Wait, hold What? Well, no. All right, here we oh, go. Here six. we go. Here <laughs> we go. That's right. Manly D's. Educated. Yeah, man. Impressive. That's where Laws of the Underground got founded, too. Is that where you met Funky Man? Yeah. Even though he was from Newark, I met him in the same batch of kids that were being sent down to Shaw University really? to try to help them out. I met him in that batch. Of is, kids. is that where you met uh, Lord Jazz too? Yeah, I met Lord Jazz. Was the DJ for Shaw University? He was on W W S H A eighty eight point one Shaw University, where Jazz lives, Raleigh, North Carolina. That was DJ Lord Jazz. He was the DJ, and he was DJing all of the parties, and he created Lords of the Underground. Really? Yeah, man. We it was another guy by the name of Derek L A Jackson. Who um, went on to manage um, Coolio? He found the Roots. He found Lords. Um, he found he worked for Marley. He was graduating, and he told Lord Jazz was one of his best friends. And he said, "Jazz, when I leave, I'm going to work for my cousin Marley Mall. Okay. You need to put a group together. Maybe so I can give it, it to So it was Lord Mar. Jazz's idea. Well, it was Derek's idea, okay. LA, to put a group together because he was going to work for Marley. Okay. But he asked Lord Jazz, since he was the DJ around everywhere, to put a group together and you be the DJ. Okay. And I'll sit at the Marley. So he knew me because I was tearing the ass off of everybody on campus. Right. And then. Not yeah. literally. No, 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 no not literally. Okay, Pause. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead. And um, I was all around. Like, I had made up my own fraternity at that time. Like, I just felt like. You're not going to exclude us out of anything. Mm. We're going to be included. And I used to just be the guy snatching the mics at all of the parties, rapping. And Jazz was like, okay, that's my first MC okay. right there. Uh-huh. And then we found this this guy named, they were talking about from Newark. And I was like, well, I don't know this right, guy. Right, right. And come to find out I knew his brother, Har Bernard, Mr. Byrne B. And, uh, and then I knew of him by the name of Turk, but I didn't know that he was Al Tariq Wardrick, who would later become Mr. Funky Man. We did a we did a song together. How we, did y'all gel? Like it was automatic. So, so Lord Jazz asked us to come to the radio show. So Lord Jazz, our station at, at Shaw was a jazz station. Okay. It didn't have hip hop. Okay. But Jazz overheard the program director saying, 
Man, it takes me an hour to get home. In another conversation, saying it takes me an hour to get home. And when I leave here, I don't even turn on this radio station. I be here all day, so I don't oh. even want to hear it. <laughs> uh-huh. So Jazz was like, an hour to get home. You don't turn on the radio station. <laughs> uh-huh. I got the keys to the station. Uh-huh. And I know where the power button is. Uh-huh. So we're going to do hip hop for an hour. Dope. And mm-hmm. he got it off. So it was this underground pirate type of hip hop mm-hmm. station on on this jazz station for a while. And everybody started saying, yo, who was he brought us up to rap? Myself and Mr. Funky. And he would say, Well, who is who is the, the people you had rapping the other day? Bring them back. Right. And that's how we, we started to go up there. Mm-hmm. And then Jazz said, Look, man, Derek is getting a job with Molly. Y'all need to make a song. And we rapped off a of, uh um Black Sheep, Flavor of the Month. Okay. And we did Psycho, which was the first song. It was our first number one, and it's the first song we ever recorded, the first song we ever did, and we did it to the Black Sheep joint. Molly loved it. He came down with the Juice Crew mm-hmm. tour at mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was ne- I had a broken hand from fighting for the day before in the gym. You know, they tried mm-hmm. to attack us alphas, so we had to. <laughs> so and then I met Molly. Molly is what ultimately put breath in your lungs. Yeah. Correct? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so that's yeah. what you went. And I didn't believe it. Derek was like, yo, my, I was like, man, everybody lying. lying. Right, man. right, right. Because niggas be lying. Niggas be lying. <laughs> but I, I didn't believe and, it at um, all. Pool have in common. Yeah. You know, Pool, Molly discovered Pool. Mm-hmm. What's the relationship like with you and Molly today? Because, you know, yeah, I heard that was some get... tension. I heard yeah. it was some tension um, with you and uh, some peoples with Molly over some bread. So, uh, did everything get resolved? Did you, did, Tell me about that. You know what? My relationship with Molly is different than Funky Man's relationship with Molly, okay. than Lord Jazz's relationship with Molly. Why is that? Um, I think that I understand what it is. Like, I understand. You do know that everybody got robbed back then. Yeah, everybody oh, okay, got so robbed right. back then. Yeah, I, I hear the story. <laughs> me, and, me, and, me and Ace talk. Me and, <laughs> <laughs> Me and Kane has had conversations. Me okay. and Biz. Right. You know, so. But I know that it was hard to digest then. Like, you're like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? I'm out here buzzing my ass and I ain't seeing nothing. I mean, even with Molly, like, initially, when we found out things weren't what they said they were, I mean, you know, we, we did the crazy stuff. We took, at this time, we used to rock with the Zoo Crew a lot. So we didn't took Zoo Crew cats up there like, yo. We need this. We need was that. Was it about money, though? Was that the issue? It was about issue? money. But I, I have to honestly say, the first time I ever came to Molly about money, he said, look, next, it, I will never forget, it was a weekend. It was like a Friday night we went mm-hmm. up there. And he said, Monday, if that's the way y'all feel, Monday, we're going to have, um, I think he was messing with an attorney, a female attorney back then. Ah, she going Nicole. Okay. Nicole, he was like, I'm going to have Nicole call the accountants. We're going to get the 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 label and we're gonna we're gonna do a uh what you, when you sign it over um amendment okay we're gonna do an amendment to how to deal it so there won't be any problems and probably within a week we got he about did that? we got about eighty thousand oh, dollars okay check sign and then it was going to us ever ever since after that so my that's why i say my situation with marley i feel like we came to him with a problem. He solved it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like he didn't want he didn't want no smoke with it. You right, know what I mean? He right. solved it. And there's there's other little things that you can complain about along the way. But at the end of the day, this man didn't totally rob me like per se of. And I felt like if it wasn't for the breath in the lungs, I wouldn't be who I am, or I wouldn't have this route. I want to say I wouldn't be who I am, but I wouldn't have the route that we took to get so. I give him credit for right, right, for right. that part of it. Mm-hmm. So y'all good now? Me and Molly always good. Oh, okay. You know, me and Molly always good. Okay. I, mean, I mean, I don't know him personally. Yeah. Of course, I've met him and seen him and spoke to him mm-hmm. on numerous occasions. But I don't know. I got a feeling that he knows that it was a lot of foulness going on. Yeah, I can believe that. But I do I believe, believe that. that he got a good heart. I don't know. Yeah. I just feel it. Like, yeah. I don't feel like he's a foul dude. Nah, I think, honestly, man, I think that you got to understand, Marley was a young dude, too, mm. coming up. And then I own a studio. So when I first opened my studio, I tried to put all of these artists together and dealing with all of these personalities. It's hard. It's difficult. Right, right, right. You know, and... I'm just a fair dude. I don't like anybody to say I owe them anything right, or I tried to right. beat them out of anything, but not taking up for Molly or anything. But I think when when they came into all of that money, he didn't know what was going oh, on. I, I know. That's he a lot he of was like, money. oh, this check came to me? Oh, I, 
I'm, <laughs> oh, I was supposed to give a piece to Nick? Oh, I was supposed to give oh, a piece to Shay? Oh, oh, hell, she, I'm good. You know, and then when the people came back, like, wait a minute, you got what? And you didn't... Right, 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 right. A whole right, lot. Right. I don't know. Oh, you didn't produce? I produced, and you got the whole check for... Right, right, right. I'll so, tell you. I'll you know, tell you. I, I think that he did a lot of things wrong. And I think he know he did a lot of things wrong, you know, with, with the artist. Everybody he, can't he be can lying. He can make it right. He can make it right. Mm -hmm. He can make it... What's and that? that's all I'm saying with, with, with us. I feel like when we approached him, he made it right. Mm, that's a conscience. You know, you know what, what I'm saying? mean? So... Yeah, you gotta show. Listen, I mm. can't be mad at Marley. He he put my baby on. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. But I do feel, and as long as he's a stand up dude and at least made an effort, then mm -hmm. that means that good karma will come his way. What's the relationship like with you and Funky Man? Cause me and Funky, um, dudes was telling me y'all don't really be fucking with each other like that no more. Um, me and Funky, that's my brother. Oh, by the way, I was lying. Nobody told me. That. Yeah, I was about to say oh, was that's like my brother. <laughs> that's my brother. Like, you gotta understand, brothers. They, they have disagreements, mm -hmm. but they still brothers. Right, right, right. I can't change that. I can't change it. I've been around Funky and, and Lord Jazz more than I've been around my own siblings. Mm. Like, literally, more than my own siblings. I, I'm finding out stuff about my sister that I never even know. Like, I found out she don't like bananas on, right, on, on Facebook. Good night, bro. <laughs> So my thing was like I was upset. Like I read Facebook. Like hold, like, up. Wait, hold up, I know Funky Man eat bananas. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> but my sister, I don't know these little <laughs> intricate details. Right, right, right. So my point is, I'm, I've been around Funky and, and Lord Jazz more day to day basis mm -hmm. than I've been. But around I'm glad my to hear sister, that. So. I'm glad. I mean, there's always gonna be turmoil when you have a group with somebody. That's why I couldn't do the group thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, you know, I was a solo artist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that thing is hard, but especially with broads. But nevertheless, I'm happy that y'all are on. Yeah, we cool. We, uh, we go uh, work, I've man. seen him um, recently. I don't know if it was a video or just a picture, but he slimmed down a lot. Yeah, he looked good, man. Yeah. What I'm, the hell? Y'all, he looking good. I think he told me he went to the hospital one day and they said that his some of his pressures or oh, something was he elevated. Yeah, he got the he he worked out. Good, that's good. Um, he gets in too. Both of y'all holding up. Oh, thanks, pretty man. Pretty good there for you, these older men there. Hey, we have to. Man. You eating right? I'm I'm uh, this campaign. This past campaign made me put on about ten pounds. Why but, is that? Oh, man, I think it's stress. You know, like, and I don't even. I'm not even a person that like stress eat or whatever. Well, you can't tell. But I mean, I, I got to get it back though. Do you I'm, work out? I'm, I've been back in there the last three days. So. Really? <laughs> yeah, definitely. What so. is it that you don't eat? Um, I wasn't. I wasn't eat for a minute before the campaign. I wasn't eating any bread. I wasn't eating any sugar, like sweets or. Mm -hmm. You don't like sweets. I, I do. I think I like them more now that I can't eat, that I say <laughs> I'm not going to eat them. Mm -hmm. Like I never was a big candy man when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I never was. But now I started liking candy. I started yeah. liking the things that What's I shouldn't your candy be eating. Um, I'm a taffy man. Really? The yeah. shit that fuck your teeth up? Yeah, and I I never had like cavities or none of that until later. Like I got like right. one or two cavities Me, so, now. But... You know what? I, when I, I think I was 45 when I got my first cavity. Right. And I went to the dentist and the doctor was like, the dentist is like, you got a cavity. I'm like, no, no, you got to check that again. Yeah. Because that was like my claim to fame. I ain't never had a cavity. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that'd be a shocker though. Yeah, I was like, that. what? So now I'm, I'm I'm making sure that all my dentist appointments yes, are straight. You're taking care of yourself. You yeah. going to the doctor? Yes, yes. Your pressure good? My pressure's good now. Oh, okay. I like to hear that because we got to yeah. take care of our legs. We have to. We For have real. to. What you have for dinner last night? Last night? I had lobster. Oh, uh, yeah. wait, oh wait, hold on so for a second. Wait a minute now. Where we at here? You had what? I had a little lobster last <laughs> night. <laughs> that uh, that councilman yeah. at large Man, over there, huh? I'm, you I'm was a getting some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm a seafood fanatic. <laughs> really? Man. I'm a seafood fanatic. I'm thinking Take about it easy right on now. that butter, do. Yeah. Take it easy. You was dipping it in butter? No, nah, I had some I had some red sauce or something man, last night. Now. Right? I ain't had too much Lobster butter last and night. what? Did I have butter last night? I did? Okay, <laughs> she remember. <laughs> I did. Yeah. And what else you had with it? A I vegetable? Had vegetables, of oh, course. Okay. Vegetables, yeah. All right, all right. Steamed right. vegetables. You know, little steamed vegetables. Mm, okay, I'm just checking on you. Yeah, um, yeah, man. So I hear Funky Man's living overseas now. Yeah, he's in the south of France, man. How did, so. he, ha how did he wind up over there? 
Well, first, DJ Lord Jazz moved over there. He was living over there for 13 years. What the hell was over there? Good women? Man, honestly, when Jazz went over there, he was just DJing. It was the culture. You know, I think he was DJing some fashion show that was... Uh, some I think it was Tommy Hilfinger or something, and then he met this girl, <laughs> yeah, right. But they broke up. He he broke up with the girl, and he just stayed over there. Oh yeah. And then he met another girl, right. had two babies, and mm-hmm. stayed over there. He stayed over there for thirteen years. I went over there for like a year with him. It was amazing. And then we came. Wait, you back. went over there for a year. Yeah, I lived over there for a year. Yeah, in Paris, man. Yeah. Why? It was you know when with who? I was by myself. Yeah, it was my, I mean, Jazz was there, so I had family there. But, you know, we're still celebrities over there. We're still stars over there. So I would go to, I was literally hosting parties for like 4,000 euro a night. Right. You talk, so I was what the hell are you for? Because I just had to get back. I, I wanted to get back to the, the film and television world. I wanted to pursue the acting, directing, producing world, you know. And I felt like I could have did it there, but it would have took more because I had to really get, more into the language Mm -hmm. and and i was learning a little Mm -hmm. you know um but i felt like i would be giving up what i had already built up here and starting over there so i said you know what let me just go back i know they was after your ass out there i know them holes was coming out the woodwork 